In this topic, the discussion is about to find the electric field intensity at point P due to charge a circular disc. Here you can see a, a blue color circular disc and it is uniformly charged with a charge density of rho s coulomb per meter square. Consider an annular ring of radius r. Here you can see a, a small ring its thickness is dr its dr is very very small and whereas this the capital r is the radius of the disc the small r is the radius of the annular disc the the point p that is h distance away from the center of the disc it is on the axis of the disc and let us consider what is the electric field intensity at point P due to this annular ring of radius R. So here the annular ring is marked and the annular ring is uh, at a distance D from the point P and if you connect the P to the extreme end of this disc it make an angle alpha whereas the theta is the P uh, make an angle, angle uh, with uh, the annular disc. The electric field intensity DE DE is the electric field intensity due to this annular ring. It has two components. One is x-axis component and y-axis component. And now we will find out what is the electric field intensity due to this annular disc. And we will get this expression. From there we will obtain what is the electric field intensity at point P due to the entire disc. The circumference of the annular disc is 2 pi r and its radius thickness is dr. Then the area of the annular disc is the area of annular ring is 2 pi r times dr. The electric field intensity at point P it is on the axis of of the disc. Let us let us see that what is the electric field intensity at P due to this annular ring. So it is a DE which is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon times rho s ds by the d square. So d is the distance between the p and, and the annular ring and rho is, is the surface charge density that is rho is, is the charge let, let us take that delta q times ds. Now, the component DE has the electric field. DE has two components. One is y-axis component and x-axis component. So, the y-axis component is DE cos theta, whereas the x-axis component is DE sin theta. Let us take it as expression number one. So using the expression number one we can find the expression of DEY and DEX which is equal to rho s ds 4 pi epsilon d square sin theta and DEY is rho s ds 4 pi epsilon d square cos theta and if you observe this so if you take a small section here so this is the electric field intensity if a if you take a similar section on the other side it will produce electric field intensity in the reverse direction 
So, so these two get cancelled. So the electric field intensity has only one component, that is an y-axis component. DEX automatically it becomes zero. To simplify the expression, we are taking this triangle. This triangle and we are taking. So here the base is R, the height is H, the hypotenuse is D. So here goes the triangle. This is 0 by default. So let us focus on the, the y axis component. And here let us substitute the DS here. So, so rho is 2 pi R DR. 4 pi epsilon d square cos theta. So from this triangle, so tan theta become, so that is r by h, opposite side by hypotenuse, so r become h tan theta. Now differentiate the, the, the radius r with respect to theta, so it become dr by d theta equal to h 6 square theta. So, dr become h 6 square theta times d theta. So, we will substitute this dr here. Now, we need to find the relationship between d and r and we will bring it to here. So, there is some cancellation of terms, common terms. And let's see that, so how we can connect the D and R. Here, sine theta equal to opposite side by hypotenuse, that is R by D. So, D become R by sine theta. Let us take it as expression number 2. Let us substitute D and DR here. So, it becomes rho is 2 pi R. The DR is H 6 square theta D theta cos theta by 4 pi epsilon. So, d square is r square by sin square theta. So, let us rearrange this expression. Let us pick up rho s 2 pi r dr h 6 square theta cos theta times sin square theta. D theta which is upon 4 pi epsilon times r square. Here r get cancelled. So, 2 pi 4 pi from 2, 6 square theta into cos theta become 6 theta and uh, if you take this h and bring it to here, so h by r by h, so what is r by h, so opposite side by uh, the nearby side that is tan theta. So, this become rho is dr sec theta sin square theta d theta which is upon 2 epsilon tan theta. 
So there is a mistake here. Forget about the dr here. There is no dr term here because we already replaced the dr with uh, h6 square theta into d theta. There is no dr component here. Similarly, there is no dr component here. And if you look at this trigonometric term, sec theta, the sine square theta by tan theta is equal to sine theta. So, so dEy times become rho s sine theta by 2 epsilon d theta. This is the expression of electric field due to the annular ring. Now I am going to bring out the what is electric field intensity at point P due to the entire disk. For that we need to integrate the angle theta. So when the annular ring is very close to the center this theta becomes zero and it is moved out to the edge of this disk the angle become alpha. So we need to integrate that function with respect to uh, theta from 0 to alpha. So E become integration from 0 to alpha rho s sine theta d theta on 2 epsilon. So rho s 2 epsilon you, you can take it out so integration of sine theta minus cos theta with limit 0 and alpha. So this becomes rho is 2 epsilon 1 minus cos alpha. This is the ex expression of electric field intensity due to the, the uniformly distributed disk. If you go back to that figure, so here we can see that the cos alpha is adjacent side which is h by this distance. That distance is r square plus h square. So this alpha we can substitute here. So E become So this expression we can use to find the electric field intensity at any point which is along the axis of the disk due to the uniformly charged distributed disk. So with this expression we will find out what is the electric field intensity due to an infinite uniformly charged sheet. That's coming to the end of the today's session.